Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and hey, today we're going to take a look at testing a ballon. Now, there's not a lot of really cool things about one-to-one -one ballons. I mean, let's face it, right? They, they eliminate what? Common mode. I mean, they don't do a transform. They don't do anything but keep all that RF out of your shack, right? Well, now, thinking about what I just said, you know, that's actually pretty cool that it can keep RF out of your shack, especially when you've got computers that go nuts, crazy, when there's RF. Yeah, anyway, so I decided I wanted to make my own one-to-one -one ballon, right? How hard could it be? So I took a look at a bunch of different designs. There was a really neat one that I found that basically was two oppositely wound pairs of wires going around a toroid. I happened to pick a uh, Type 31 toroid. Uh, I had some 18 gauge um, Teflon coated wire for thermal things. And I just went for it. Um, followed the instructions 12 times through the center for the two for the pair that's on this side and 12 times through the center wrap the opposite way for the pair on that side tied them all together the way the instructions said and said wow all right i wrapped my own ballon boy boy this is pretty cool and then i realized that well how do i know it works so did some more research and found out that hey my little nano vna tiny would take care of all that. Actually, it's a mini VNA tiny, but six of one, half dozen of another. Um, but if you have a nano VNA, hey, you can do the same thing that I did uh, to test this. So what you're about to see is me testing my one-to-one -one ballon that I made against a commercial one-to-one -one ballon that I owned uh, just to see how it stacked up. And I have to tell you, the results were a little surprising. So with no further ado, let, oh, yeah, you know, the XYL kill me if I don't say, please subscribe. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. If you want to get notified of when I come out with new videos, click on the notification icon. I think it's a bell. And, you know, join the group that watches what I put out, okay? Anyway, with that... Let's get on with the show. Well, as promised, we're going to go ahead and do an analysis on two different balloons. Uh, let's see here. So what we have is we have a commercial ballon, and over there, down at the bottom, we've got a hand-wound ballon. So the commercial ballon uh, basically is a one-to-one -one and is rated up to 1,500 watts. The one that I have that I wound myself is on a uh, Type uh, uh, 31 toroid, and uh, that is 18 gauge Teflon wire, and it is wound in opposite directions, two wires on either side, 12 times through the center. Uh, we're going to use the Mini VNA uh, Tiny to go ahead and check it. So the first thing we need to do is calibrate it. So through the magic of video, we're gonna show it to you, but we're gonna fast forward it. All right, well, now that we have the calibration done, let's go ahead and run the first initial test, shall we? All right then, so. First test I'm going to do is going to be just a simple SWR test on the two devices. Um, and that should be fairly easy to do. We're going to go ahead and pop this. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put some test ends on this commercial one here and right there like so all right let's place that here 
and we're going to get that same 50 ohm resistor that we had. We're going to pop it on the end here, like so. And we're going to hook our device under test stuff over to this end, like so. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to change this over to reflection over here. And let me change my screen. And we're going to go ahead and run a single pass on all the HF frequencies. And let's see where we end up. All right, so what I'm really interested in is two things. I'm interested in SWR, and I am also interested in uh, resistance. So with the SWR over here, I want to go ahead and uh, actually this looks pretty good, 0 to 5. And then on this side for resistance, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this currently is at 50, uh, 0 to 50, uh, 100 ohms. So, you know, this looks pretty good. Take a look at that. Very nice. Okay, our resistance gets up to about 70. Our SWR on the high end here is showing, well, you know, it's showing about 1.45. That's not bad at all. And if I take a look down here, we're looking pretty good with uh, SWR is zero uh, right around, oh, what appears to be right around uh, 40 meters. So, you know, I like those numbers. Those are pretty good. Very impressive. All right. Now let's go ahead and test the uh, throughput, but I'm going to save this as a reference here. So let me export. And we'll go ahead and select XML, and let's make this a reference for, uh, let's see, uh, COM 1-1-SWR. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hook up for the next test, which let me go ahead and switch back so you can see what I'm doing. So here we need to set up a little bit of a different rig here. What we've got is we've got a basically a wire and on either side coming to the center is 25 ohms on either side. It makes a total of 50. We're going to hook to the center of this with our test equipment. We need to put this on both sides. So let me go back out there and pop this on like so. There we go. Now we're going to hook up our receiving side on the mini VNA. And let's see. All right. We need to hook our grounds together, right? Like so. And we're going to hook one end, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go this way with it. It doesn't really matter, but we'll hook one end over there and the other end over here, like so. That should give us our test environment. Make sure nothing's touching anything. Everything looks good. We'll move this out of the way. And let's go ahead and run a transmission test. I'll switch my video. There we go, and let's run a single pass. Same frequencies, all of HF. All right, so now let's go ahead and we'll take a look at our loss. And that's all that really matters in this test. Now, I am told that you have to have a minimum of 20 dB loss from, uh, from a ballon in this test to prove that it is actually eliminating enough common mode to be worthwhile. Um, and I'm also told that I have to add 2 dB to these numbers. So in other words, if right here at the bottom, I see that it is a negative 24 um, dB, I have to add 2 to make it a negative 22 dB. So it looks like this thing starts to stop really being super effective. Um, 
I'm going down to where I get to 22, right about there, which is, you know, that's just above 80 meters, just below, uh, looks like it's just below, um, just below 30 meters. Okay, yeah, just below 30 meters. So 20, uh, 20, it doesn't look like you're getting any real benefit out of this. It's close, but it doesn't meet spec. And it's pretty doggone uh, poor over here on 30 meters, or excuse me, on 10 meters. I'll get this all out correct. Um, but interesting. So let's go ahead and save this as a reference. And uh, this is going to be the commercial, and we're just going to say TL for transmission loss. And it really isn't transmission loss because what we're trying to do is we're trying to check if there's a loss in the shield. Okay, that's what we want. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and unhook here. I'll change my video back around. We'll unhook this little gem right here. Set it off to the side. And let's bring in my homemade booger here. And we'll set that right there. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to want to, let's see, I'm going to want to hook this up right here. This is just a uh, 50 ohm resistor, so it's emulating the, uh, and I'll pull off this. I want the connections to be the same as it was for the commercial one. Um, this is just emulating a, uh, antenna or a load a 50 ohm load on the far side so we have a reasonably good rating and we'll go ahead now let's go ahead and uh, go back to this and we're going to select uh, reflection let's see how this does this is one that i wound myself so uh, i got my fingers crossed that uh, it's going to look good but you never know all right so let me go ahead and change this over to swr and I'm going to change this over to uh, resistance, right? Regular old uh, resistance in ohms. And uh, all right, so there I am at 50. It starts to come up. I'm at about 70 ohms up here at the top. Um, and my SWR actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's within range. My SWR on the, the very high side of the band is... Uh, 1.5, 1.6, um, not bad, not bad. So uh, at uh, it never completely gets down to zero though, and I'm not, I don't know if that's great or not, but I think for what I'm trying to do, this should work okay. Um, let me go ahead. I want to save this. Uh, well, let's take a look at the reference. Let's just look at the reference directly. I'm going to go ahead and load up the reference for uh, commercial SWR. So, yeah, I mean, the SWR is pretty close here, actually. What about the resistance? Let's take a look at resistance here. The resistance is almost identical. So, you know, um, I guess it really isn't that bad. That looks pretty doggone good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'm happy with that. Um, you know, the SWR is uh, worse in some places and better in others. Uh, so I'm going to call it close enough to the same. Let's do the dB drop test on it and see how well it does. Let me switch back. And again, we need to set up kind of with the same setup here. I've got this that is the test rig here for this. Actually, I think I need to figure out a way to split these up a little better like that. Put that up like that. Let's do the same on this side. All right. Actually, that looks pretty good there. Pretty good there. All right, I need to grab my other test leads here. All right, so 
Let's jump these together like so. There we go. We're going to hook up one side to this like that. Oh, Got to get it in there, don't I? There we go. Hook the other side up to this like that. Make sure nothing's touching. Everything looks good and hooked up. Let's see what we got. So we're going to check the transmission now. I'm going to go back to the meter readings and let's do a scan and see what we have. So, patience, 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 right? Okay, so I want to look at the dB loss, which is already selected, and that's all I want to look at. There's really not much else to look at. So, well, I can tell right now that I think I'm a little lower here. I think this is working a little bit better than that commercial balance. Let's go ahead and load our comparison here. Uh, so our reference is going to be the uh, commercial TL XML. Wow. Actually, that is a pretty serious difference. Um, I'm blocking a lot more common mode with the one that I wound. I wouldn't have expected that. I, I expect commercial stuff that I buy to be just as good, if not better, than what I'm trying to do, um, making them myself. So that's kind of a surprise. I mean, seriously. Um, that said, wow. Even, uh, even discounting the uh, 2 dB over here at 30, or excuse me, uh, 10 meters, um, I'm still at almost 25 dB loss. That is amazing. All right, well, that proves that. And it also shows that uh, the ballon that I wound myself is probably just as good, if not better, than the commercial one that I was using before. So uh, I guess I, wow, I didn't actually expect it to be that different. But I guess I need to get this little darling into a box and get it up in the air because this may reduce some of the nasty, nasty uh, common mode that I get when I'm running the amp. Anyway... Wow, um, that's a lot to absorb. Anyway, I hope you learned something here. Um, let me really quick go over the test rig with you one more time, just so you know um, kind of how it was set up. So what I have here, and I'm going to hold it, kind of try to hold it up where it gets a decent focus, is I actually have... Um, four 50 ohm resistors here and these two on either side are in parallel and then they're hooked up together so it comes in here goes out and comes back down there um, if I look at my resistance on the end of these ends it's going to be 50 ohms uh, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling here from the center right when I'm doing the test and I got that information uh, from a couple books on how to do that. And of course I'm doing that on either side. These little test cables here that I have, I only really need to show you one. Um, these are what I'm actually hooking up to the uh, device on either side. And I, I, I made these things because, you know, a lot of times I, I, I do tests like this and I, I, every time I use a different cable and muck with this and mess with that, uh, so I'm reasonably happy with uh, the way these cables perform. So, and they were easy to make, you know, uh, again, some clips, tie it into some coax that attaches. Um, and, oh, this last one, uh, this, is, this is just uh, uh, 200 ohm uh, resistors, right, in parallel to make a 50 ohm dummy load, basically. Uh, don't. Don't try to transmit into something like this. You will surely cook it because I think it's a total of about a half a watt that it'll take. More than enough to handle, right, our little uh, um, V&A Tiny. But, boy, you'll sure cook them fast with your rig.
Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's nice to be able to actually show that something that you make yourself is better than something that you spend a lot of money to buy. Uh, by the way, cost-wise, realistically, I got about, you know, by the time I get it in a box and put ends on it, I'm going to say I probably have about 40 bucks, maybe 35 bucks in parts at full retail uh, for this uh, ballon that I made. But I'm telling you, I paid more for that commercial ballon. I probably paid close to 50 bucks. Um, time to build it? Well, you know, all in, probably an hour, hour and a half. Um, and it was fun! You guys got to do these projects. They're fun. Anyway, with that, hey, thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon. Well, I promised you some surprises, right? That kind of surprised me. Uh, hey, I'm really happy about it, too, because I have to tell you, you know, uh, although it was fun to do, you know, my my hands hurt a little bit after wrapping that uh, ballon, wrapping the wire so tight and getting it all in there right. Uh, it was a little bit of work, but to be really honest with you, it, it was very rewarding, especially with the results we got. Uh, anyway, hey, if you like the video, click on the thumbs up for me, will you? And also, you have any questions or comments, make them down in the comments down below. I usually get to all the questions within a day or so, so, uh, you know, I try to answer everyone you send, okay? With that, I'm Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and hope to hear you on the air.